Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas, 42,000, 45,000 people here for Amazon Web Services reInvent 2017 annual conference. This is the day three, it's our wrap up, wrapping up the day in the show. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman and Justin Warren. We've been covering this thing, interviewing guests, interviewing some partners and customers, breaking down the data, breaking down the stories. Guys, let's, let's wrap this thing up. I mean, what is your analysis? What is your take? Justin, we'll start with you. We had a chance to, Interview all the top people, always at the parties. What is the story here at reInvent? This is a real merging of, of the, the application developers and what we would call the more traditional kind of companies. It feels like reInvent this year is that real blending of the entire IT ecosystem. The cloud is, is the place to be. We have 45,000 people here. The energy here is amazing. I'm seeing lots of new vendors, lots of vendors that are, that are the kind of cloud native people, but I'm also seeing a lot of traditional vendors here. So the, the traditional vendors are coming to the AWS, they're coming to the, the cloud party. Yeah. I, Stu, your thoughts, Yeah, so your John, reaction. having done this for five years now, there's certain things you kind of compare and contrast. So I remember a couple, few years it was, you know, you know, oh, frictionless, Amazon's going to make it so easy. Well, come on, we, there's so many announcements. We, we know the cloud's not easy anymore, but uh, th there's a term we use sometimes, it's the democratization of things. You know, last year it was, you know, Alexa is the democratization of people doing skills and therefore they're kind of getting their hands wet with, with the serverless and the Lambda stuff. This year, uh, Deep Lens is, uh, we talked to Swami, said, you know, fun way to learn machine learning. And, talked to a bunch of people that went and did it, they were like, hey, I got this cool little kit and I did it and it was fun. I did the hot dog, not hot dog thing. Um, and you know, people are super excited, they're learning. Uh, when you talk about kind of communities, uh, you know, we haven't talked a lot about open source this week, but a lot of movement with what Amazon's doing there. Um, they are enabling their partners, they are really enabling, as they say, it's builders. It's all over all the airports, yeah. it's what they talked about in all the keynotes, and it's reality. I, I, I said it, it's, it's refreshing to listen to keynotes uh, where where you know, there's some snark as some certain things, but it's like, look, Amazon's not BS. Amazon, you know, they bring it, they deliver it, you get yeah. your hands on it immediately, um, and you know, this conference is the one that just every year it delivers and impresses. Yeah. I would just add my take on it, we can have a conversation, I agree with both of you, and I'll add, it's not BS, it's legit. I think now is the time where we crossed over a tipping point where Amazon Web Services is uh, absolutely legit in the enterprise. They've proven it, they've proven it in public sector and continue to prove it. They continue to prove it for the startups by offering them a great way to get into market. And I think to me the big story this year is legitimacy across the board in every vertical, in every category, startup, enterprise, public sector, and two, the FUD we've been hearing for five years is being debunked. Okay, so the nonsense that we've been hearing from other vendors, Amazon can't do this, they can't do that, where FUD is being debunked, it's just not true. So Amazon has had a historical track record of moving fast and delivering. They're legitimate, they've been debunking this, and the marketplace, vendors are moving in and making money. They're growing, the access to new markets, developers are building new solutions. So to me, this whole re-engineering, re-imagining is happening, and Amazon's just feeding the marketplace. So yeah. they're, they're absolutely executing flawlessly. Yeah, yeah. John, I'll call back. You know, you know, I know Dave Vellante wishes he was here with us, but you know, his seminal piece that he wrote, you know, Amazon is not only the 800 pound gorilla, but they are the cheetah in the marketplace because they move faster. I'm trying to think what animal is the best listener to because Amazon, they listen, they react, they move fast. It, you know, it, it's interesting. If there's any critique I got from some customers is like, well, they're not as transparent as some of their roadmaps a year from now. Well, if they're working on you know, serverless Aurora, I don't think a year ahead of time they were ready for it. The Amazon's moving so fast, it's that you know, six week pizza teams, you know, scrums, you know, things are changing so fast, well, they're trying I wanna, to. I want to I wanna ask, yeah. ask both of you guys a question because, okay, let's assume the competition's here. Yeah. They're going to knock, they're going to react. Obviously, they're trying really hard. Microsoft in particular, Oracle, both install base guys, old guards, trying to be new guards. Google, the new guard, has, may have tech and some scale, could pretty much come in quickly. The question is this, as Amazon rolls in these enterprise workloads, they're getting the data, they're getting the instrumentation, they have the new Relic report come out, it's teasing the marketplace that they have data on 
so many workloads that if they open that up, they could have a competitive advantage because they're seeing more data. So if they get more services and they have more data, they might be in an opportunity to provide something that no other vendor could provide. That is market intelligence or service level intelligence. Yep. So thoughts, your reaction to that, Justin? If the other vendors are reacting to what Amazon announced this week, they are already too late. They were too late a year ago. They, they, they need to be looking at where Amazon is going to be in two or three years, and they need to start planning for that. In fact, if they've only just started planning for that, it's, it's already too late. They needed to have started working on that three, four, five years ago. Yeah, uh, and you know, John, absolutely. I, you know, we hear from Andy every time. He's like, I'm not thinking about my competition. Maybe he's thinking about Larry a little bit uh, and you know, the migrations off of that. But what he is thinking about is what customers want. And you know, here's what I'd say is all the cloud players, they're playing different games. I don't think most of them are saying, I'm watching Amazon and doing what they had. Look, no. there was some impressive video stuff from Amazon. Google made a lot of video announcements earlier this year. We were at the show. You know, Google's got YouTube. Google has a lot of experience. You know, they are really the incumbent there. Google knows how to do data. Microsoft has lots of applications. They all, they play to their strengths. They listen to their customers. But you know, Amazon, uh, to, to, to your point, John, you know, data, you know, I said it last year when we interviewed Andy, I think data's the next flywheel. Talking to the Wikibon analyst team here, the economies of scale that Amazon can get due to their customers well, and their data set could continue yeah. to separate I, them. I, I asked Andy Jackson that question directly, and it's on siliconangle.com, the longer post on the full transcript, so if you want to see, it's a really important point. I said, hey, you know, are you saying, that, oh, you listen to customers, therefore you're winning? Okay, I got that, you're doing a great job. Yeah. Well done. You're saying Microsoft doesn't listen to their customers, or Oracle doesn't listen to their customers? So yes, they got a lot of customers. So he, I forget his exact words, I have to look at the transcript, but I'll just paraphrase. They might not really be listening to their customers, so he kind of was saying, well, what are they actually looking for to listen to? So, well, kind of insinuating so, that they're not really listening to customers. John, so, so here's an interesting thing, because when in the analyst session, the, some of the nuance there is they said, your customers can't tell you what to build. You need to understand you know, the outcomes they need in the business because, you know, and, and look, Google's going to say, we're smarter than you anyway, we know how to build it. Amazon yeah. has good engineers. It's, uh, it's the old yeah. marketing thing. It's like customers yeah. don't want drills, they want holes. You have to understand I mean, Steve, the market. Steve Jobs said when, when he was alive, look at it, if I was going to build the iPhone by customer input, I would have built a kick-ass Blackberry. Yeah. <laughs> right, so you got to look at what's going on at the time of the evolution. Okay, Oracle, Larry Ellison. So one of my favorite points was uh, Tom Siebel was on theCUBE, and I yep. said, hey Tom, so how would, what would you do? I mean, you're doing great with C3IoT, clean sheet of paper, you're an entrepreneur, you're kicking ass, surfing the big wave. But if, what if you were in charge of Oracle or IBM, what would you do? Yeah. And he goes, I wouldn't bet against Larry, I did that already. So the question is, Andy yeah. Jassy versus Larry Ellison. The old dog, can you teach the old dog new tricks? Andy Jassy, the up and comer. What's I your thoughts? You would not discount Larry. I, I agree with Tom. I mean, Tom, Tom knows Larry pretty well. And it's like, I would not bet against Larry. But again, I think if he tries to out AWS, AWS, it's like, you can't be more AWS than AWS. That is, that is a losing proposition. I don't think Larry is that stupid. I think he is going to be the best oracle that he can be. Yeah. And find the customers who need the best oracle. He's going to have a, the right boat for oracle. Yeah, John, That's let right. me put a point on that even. Yeah. The battle is not infrastructure as a service. Correct. That battle has been won. It is SaaS and PaaS. Amazon keeps building their services where they can get embedded more and engage it. Oracle, very heavily involved in SaaS, making tons of acquisitions in this space. I think they understand it. They've had some wow. challenges in going of course, Oracle's doing the cloud, and I'm not saying that there isn't a need for infrastructure as a service, but it's the up well, the stack. Jassy might have matters. a blind spot. Yeah. You know, he drops his shoulder a little bit before he punches. Maybe he can get in there, Ellison. But the tell sign for Jassy is this, and I told him this on Twitter. I have to tell him in person. On his keynote, he had a Gartner Magic Quadrant up there that said, "We're the leader." of infrastructure as a service. Now, first of all, I, I think guard is old guard, so their metrics don't apply to kind of the new guard, but that's a tell sign, Stu. He's using Gartner Magic Quadrant as a reference to how, what he thinks winning is. Is that a blind spot for him? Because your point, infrastructure as a service. I think that's a signal like having Goldman Sachs on stage. That is just saying that cloud has arrived, it is enterprise ready, it is safe. AWS Cloud is not just for startups anymore. This is big business, this is, this is the new normal. So he's using a Gardner badge value to signal to customers. There are a lot of customers who will only take you seriously if you are in the right magic quadrant. Now whether that's a good decision well, or not, I know not. it's not right, the right magic quadrant, but 
So I'm not here to argue with what customers believe in, but okay. Amazon, again, if that's what customers want to see, what do you think? Amazon will bring it. Uh, John, my friends have told me not to even mention Gartner, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you would keep on. I don't mind. They're old guard as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, the modern definition of a cloud, if the metrics of a new guard is not the magic quadrant, which is my thesis, what is the metric for a new guard? I don't think we have it yet. I don't think anyone has cracked that formula. Maybe you guys can figure that out and you'll be able to, you'll have yeah. the new wonderful brand. Out of my zillion to-do list. All right, final thoughts on this conference. Stu, go. Yeah, uh, John, you know, number one thing I always just want to look at here is what's the customer sentiment? There's more than 10,000 people here last year than this year. Yeah, there were some logistic things that they were sorting out, but customers, they're moving faster. Like, oh my gosh, and there's still a little bit, it's not, there, there was for years there was, oh, I'm going to be disrupted type thing. Now it's like, oh, can I learn fast enough? Can I keep up with it? You know, oh great, I, I, I think I have something in there. And like, oh, but there's, it's not the new cool shiny, it's the, how can I take advantage of as many things as possible? You asked a great question, Andy. How, you know, so many announcements, oh, they only need to worry about what they need, when they need it. There are so many things that can actually have significant impacts on the business today that, that is though. So, great customers, great event. You know, John, compared to where we started at this show, you know, it, it's been an yeah, amazing way to ride. Five years ago, there's only one queue. We were like, hey, come on up. Now you it's were like, in the back corner. we're both, <laughs> we got two sets. Thoughts on the show, final thoughts. It's, it's been a great show. This has been my first reInvent. It is not quite what I was expecting. It's, it's better than I was expecting. Uh, it is that real blending of things. And Stu, I agree, the customer stories, the things that we're hearing from the different parts of the AWS ecosystem that they use, and how quickly they get hold of something, they get productive, they learn about it, the number of people lining up for sessions here, learning about deep technical topics, about how to get things done, they are vastly oversubscribed. Everyone is yeah. desperately keen to get on board and, and really get going. And, and just, we've been at shows where there's deep technical content and then it gets diluted. This yes. is the sixth year of the show. It yeah. keeps getting better. It, it, John, it, it might need to be broken up into some pieces because yeah, it's, it, it's a little bit too big. You know, we'll, we'll talk to the event team about that. Well, my, ta my take is this, Amazon, they're, on, they're really on message. Oh, we listen to customers, we have customer input. Okay, I buy that, that's true. But the real thing that they're doing that they're not talking about, or they are, but in their own way, is and what I think is valuable is they're creating a value. They're creating an opportunity for developers to have an easier program to program, startups to make money, get into market with less venture capital. They're allowing new application layer level services be easy to execute and get into market, and they're just creating a lot of low cost, high value opportunities, and they're sharing it. So they're not really kind of doing the land grab, there's, their long game is land grab through just territory taking over. They're at the center of an entire ecosystem. This is their ecosystem. Yeah. It, it is an amazing thing. Yeah, John, John, what's the one thing that you know, five years from now we're going to look back at an announcement at this show and be talking about? I, I think two, th two threads. The innovation engine that Amazon is becoming is core of their strategy. I think we're going to look at, we're going to see the um, AI stuff and the software around at the top of the stack where things are automated for just Joe developer, Mary developer out there, Joe six pack, Mary, on the, uh, Mary Jane developer, just banging out code, rolling out a kiosk app that's on an iPad that has all this intelligence in it versus an old way of lo locking down a server, rolling it in, full stack developers. I think the notion of full stack developer is probably going to go away from this and I think that's my take. So John, for me, serverless is going to deliver yes. on what Paz has been promising us, us and failing on for way too long. Let's do. I, I couldn't agree more. I think that we are going to see everything with it, like serverless, I don't really like the term, but that's what we're all going to use. It's like, we didn't, know, we didn't like cloud originally, but I didn't like hey, big data either, but you know, know, hey. Cloud, we all hated that one too, come yeah. on. <laughs> well, I want to thank um, you guys, great show. I want to thank Intel and all the ecosystem partners and all the, the folks that supported theCUBE over five years at Amazon reInvent and all the folks watching, we really appreciate it. Um, we don't ask to register. If you see out there, hit us up on Twitter. Uh, let us know you're out there. And of course, go to siliconangle.com, wikibon.com, and the new website, thecube.net. And for Amazon this year, we rebooted our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash siliconangle, and added a new one, twitch.tv slash thecube. We're going to program to those. And of course, we have our other channels and continue to cover. I want to thank the crew, everyone here, everyone back live blogging, everyone back at the ranch. Thanks for watching. This is a wrap up of 2017 ADOS reInvent. Thanks for watching. <laughs>